Welcome to this week's episode of Combat Chats. This week we're going to be talking about the previous fight night between Volkov and Rosenstreak, as well as the upcoming fight card. Last week we spoke about three fights which we look forward to, a preliminary one and still the main card, co-main and main event. So we're going to be talking about uh, that. I'm going to hand it to Finn now. Yeah, so this week we're joined by Harry again, who was with us last week. Hi guys. Um, and the first fight we decided to speak about last week was the... Uh, it was Jeff Molina against Z- Zimigula- Zimigulov. 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 There we go. Nailed it this time. Um, so I think, I mean, I got this fight horribly wrong. Um, I, can't, I think you called a Zimigulov decision. I can't remember 100%, Fergal. So I can't remember 100% either. But I feel like that would have been what I called. Um, obviously, you know, it didn't quite go that way. Um, whether it should have or not, you know, that down to the judges, you know, mm-hmm. 30 27 absolutely appalling, but we'll go more into that later on anyway. Yeah, that's but yeah, judge anyway. it again. Yeah, always, always. Yeah. Just for a change. At least one on every card, it seems nowadays. <laughs> it does, it seems. And the, the thing is, the, with the judging, it's not like they're getting the fights wrong necessarily. I mean, I think this one was wrong. I think Zimigulov did enough to win the fight. Same but um, one of the judges gave it a 30-27 to Jeff Molina, which is just crazy in my eyes. Well, I but, think he's shocking. I mean, uh, Jeff Molina, he did. He fought well. I mean, I can see why the decision went his way, but at the same time, I don't agree with it. Um, simply because... There's been so we spoke about the Weasels video last week, and there's been so much emphasis on damage in scoring. And Jeff Molina was hit with the biggest shot of the whole fight, and his knees buckled. So, I mean, I don't know how you can give it thirty twenty seven in in that in that case. But I'm not going to spend ages on this fight. Um, uh, Jeff Molina used good feints. His boxing looked good as always. Zimagulov couldn't actually get him to the ground much, which was surprising. I think he got two, three takedowns on him. I think in the first round he got caught. Um, Zimagulov managed to catch Molina with a couple of big, big right hooks and mm. overhands though, which which seemed to be working quite yeah, well for him. Yeah, he's very wild, isn't he? Yeah. And it was the second round with that left hook where his knees mm. buckled. Um, so what was your thoughts on the fight, Harry? I thought it was a good fight. I mean, um. I didn't think I didn't think the judges um, should have given it to Molina, if I'm honest. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we we get these we get these fights, and you can't really argue with the judges. Mm. They're the ones who are paid to do it. And uh, if you remember when the judge read thirty twenty seven, because obviously when it goes to split decision, shocked when they go to split decision, they uh, read it out name by name. And um, when they gave it to. When they said thirty twenty seven, Jeff Molina walked off, looked looking all pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you already lost. So. Lost, and then that's a yeah, run back. Have you got what have you got to say about this fight, folks? I mean, as a fight, you know, it, it was it was an okay fight to watch. I mean, it's not it wasn't really interesting first two rounds, you know. Um, well, I mean, all three rounds, you know, there's a lot of wrestling, you know, attempted by Zima Gulov. Mm. Um, obviously there's a bit of stand up and whatnot. It's it's not how I would have liked to see the fight uh, go go away. You know, I mean, like, I was going to see, you know, a lot more striking. Both are really good strikers. You know, Jeff Molina, very technical. So, so is Zima Gulov as well. Both are very, very technical. Mm. You know, obviously, Zima Gulov, he does, um, he does, you know, go for some really wild shots at times. I mean, Whereas me... Molina is very much, you know, very much technical, very much traditional boxing stance. I thought about the, the wrestling and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's disappointing, really, because nothing really came of it. I mean, you know, I, I feel like Zima Gulov had the better control of the fight. Mm. Overall, you know, you see Jeff Molina grab the cage a few times. Uh, Jeff Molina did go for a submission at guillotine in the second round, I believe, but yeah, nothing came of it. We but, um, were, overall, you know, at a fight, I don't think it was. Um, I don't think it was amazing. No, nothing special. You know, certainly not the best uh, of the three fights which we decided to choose. I do think that Zima Gulov perhaps won on decision, mm. but obviously saying that, you know, you, you're not really scoring many points for what he did because other than maybe holding against a cage and a few, you know, failed attempts. Wrestling, yeah, sure, got free takedowns and whatnot, but other than that, he didn't really do anything. He shot straight back up. You spoke, uh, when we were speaking about this fight, uh, just after it happened, you you said you liked Simagulov's footwork, if you want to expand a bit, like, you, uh, the re- like how good he was just staying away from the danger. So I think, you know, looking at Simagulov, you know, he was he was very good on the feet, in the sense of his footwork, mm. you know, his footwork. Jeff Mina couldn't get anywhere close to him. Yeah. Honestly, he never, he couldn't get close enough to really, you know, demonstrate his, his boxing ability. And I think that his footwork as well is just so clean. Yeah. And it's so efficient, you know, the, the way he was able to evade it. 
It's yeah, very, hard, really very hard to read where he's going to go, if, I'm, if I might add. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, uh, definitely so, definitely so. As you said, Harry, you know, very, very hard to read. And I think that, um, I feel like that, you know, would have also been another same decision went his way, which I, I think it should have, in my opinion. Mm. I think that would have definitely, you know, been one of the major causes of um, of, of him, you know, of, of him winning that fight just due to uh, Zuma Gulov, you know, not being able to get touched as much as Molina would have liked. I mean, overall, as I said, you know, it was not the most exciting fight to watch at all. Mm. Um, fairly boring at times, you know. I would like to see a lot more standing banging or a lot more on my feet. Always. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I think, you know, I think Molina. I think that's what Molina wanted because the way he was, the way he was, the way he was trying to chase him down and just like, like literally just stalking him, following him. He just could not get close enough to I do think, anything. Um, he cut the cage off really poorly as well. Yeah, like, he did, he did yeah, he was just he was just straight lines yeah. following him around, and mm. it wasn't the play. Of, it wasn't it wasn't Jeff's best performance okay. we've seen. He just wanted to come and scrap, and not everyone's going to want to do that with someone who can box as well. Mm. As Alina. Anyway, um. Harry, if you wanna if you wanna just give us a little start on the next fight we're gonna talk about, which was it was Danny Gay for a Amir a, 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 no who was it it was uh, I can't remember Mossad Evelyn yeah, that's it Evelyn I was thinking of Ami Amir <laughs> I think uh, well I think I'm a bit pretty disappointed in this one as well because I I, I really really wanted Ige to, to win mm. I called I called I called Ige last week so that was a terrible call from me yeah, I mean, <laughs> we all had a dodgy one. Um, but I think I think he had an okay first round and everything just kind of went downhill from there. Like even later on in the first round, uh, Evlev Evlev just took over. Yeah, there wasn't there wasn't much that 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 Ige could do at all. Mm. He, um, Evlev just looked like the better fighter. Yeah, everywhere we everywhere. I, yeah, I mean I was saying last week that um, I'd be shocked if he was able to just dominate Dan Ige everywhere, and he did that. And I'm telling you, watching it, I was shocked. Uh, uh, his... We, we knew we knew he we knew he was good in yeah, both yeah. in both areas. We just didn't know he could put it all together. I, I, I didn't. Like I, I, I'll be honest. I did not know he could strike that. I way. knew he could strike. I didn't know like that. I didn't know he yeah. could like that because that was a, that was a real masterclass. I mean, he, was, <laughs> his, he was landing constant leg kicks, body kicks, knees up the middle, front kicks to the body. He was switching up so much and. Danny gave early on. He looked like he was just froze in motion a bit. Later on, he did kind of just throw caution to the wind and realize he needs to go for it and just make this fight dirty. But he, he, it seemed like to me he didn't really have a clue what to do on the feet. Or, you know, I mean, he got dominated on the ground too. I mean, it's a really interesting one. Um, I didn't expect to give us way at all. I thought, you know, Danny yeah, having the experience he has, having fought the fights he had in his last few bouts, I thought, you know, that would definitely provide him with some kind of advantage. You know, especially you know considering he has fought such um, such top quality, you know, fighters as of recently. Mm. Um, same at the performance Evlev put in I mean it was absolutely immense you know he just the athleticism constantly driving forward you know whether it be on the feet whether it be you know with the takedowns and whatnot everything about him looked good his wrestling his striking his jiu-jitsu he looked really really impressive the level of athleticism and I don't think Dan Ige necessarily had poorly mm. there were a few times in which he landed some really really good shots mm. some really really good straight, uh, strikes and I think that you know as, as a uh, from an opportunity's point of view, you know, he, he did do well during the opportunities. However, unfortunately, Evelev was just too switched on. It was almost yeah. as if, you know, he just had perfect clarity and everything. It was his day. Yeah, it was. Exactly. He looked so comfortable. He looked like he was in control the whole time and he put on an absolute masterclass of performance and he really hurt Danny. You, you, you could just see it. Mm. You know, and I mean, that's not an easy thing to do at all. Danny Gay's not an easy person to hurt. Definitely not. But fair play to Danny Gay because, I mean, he, he took a lot during that bout. He took a so much, so much. Mm. And to remain in, you know, the condition he did, you know, it, he, it, it, didn't, it wasn't comfortable for him. It was, it was clear to see that and it wouldn't be comfortable for anyone. His face, but he had he what was it black black eyes in the first mm, round? You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's just nasty cuts on the chin, side of his head. I mean, his coach was saying in between rounds, like you're a fucking whole iron. Like you know, they're known for how tough they are. And just another example, we got Max Holloway who just eats everything on the chin for breakfast as well. Definitely. So I mean, it was it was definitely an interesting bout. I mean, it it was good to see Mozart even do well. He still remains unbeaten. 16 and 0 now. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, he's one to watch out for now. I, I want to the division. I've got, I, got to worry. I, I, I mean, he called out uh, Arnold Allen. Um, I don't really. I think Arnold Allen's ranked number six, so I don't think it makes the most perfect sense. I'd like to. I'd love to see um, Evelev versus Bryce Mitchell. I think that's the fight to make. 
that, yeah, that gra- the, the grappling of them two against each other would be insane. Would be a very good fight to watch. Would be a very, very good fight to watch. Anyway, folks, do you want to move us on with the main event? Of course. So the main event was between Alexander Volkov versus GZ in the uh, Rosen Street. Don't believe I pronounced our first name correctly, yeah, but, you know, yeah. I, I, I gave it a go. I gave it a go. The question is, which name's harder, the first one or the second one? <laughs> I, 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 well, I, I'm going to give the first one. Yeah, but yeah, a, I agree. A, a, everyone, agree. everyone hears the name Rosen Streak, so you know, yeah, I, yeah. I, maybe if I'd never heard the name before ever, which obviously, you know, considering he has a fight night named after him every other week, it feels like it would be hard not to, you know, remember mm. that name. But anyway, as a bout, I mean, Rosen Streak, lackluster. Yeah. Did, didn't really do anything. He looked shook, honestly. Mm-hmm. What, what should him fight? He, it, it, he did not look there in the face. I don't know what it was, but Volkov put on a very good performance. Very technical, those kicks. So good, man. I think Volkov is so talented. Oh, 100%, 100%. You know, I'm um, a very experienced fighter. You know, obviously, Rosen Streak has an amazing kickboxing record. Mm. You know, he's got a few good knockouts in the UFC. But even then, you know, looking at his knockouts and whatnot... The fighters themselves aren't always that insane. He's very good at striking when the opportunity, you know, when the opportunity is present. He's very good mm. at getting that knockout when the opportunity is present. But I think Volkov just got on a masterclass. He, I don't think he could have dealt with the pressure. I mean... Yeah, no, I agree, with this, I agree with that stoppage too, yeah. Mm. I definitely say, um, as you said about the stoppage, you know, I I, I think that um the only reason why he evaded was because Herb Dean was there. Yeah, with his arm over it, you know, there would have been no way, but the way he was performing, I, I don't think he would have responded, I don't think he would have reacted in no. a way which would have shown he would have been defending himself, and I think because of that, it was the correct stoppage, because it, it probably did protect his health, you know, from putting a stoppage like that, so, um, mm. but yeah, really, really good performance from Volkov, Volkov calm, composed, technical, accurate, you know, what we really, really like to see, you know, it's quite an early, um, it's quite an early Fight as well, wasn't it? Like, as in, you know, yeah. not, not early as in stoppage, but early as in, didn't last very long at all. Mm. How long would you say? Uh, it was, I mean, it was done in the first two, three minutes. I mean, yeah, well, I think it was about two, 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 yeah, two and a half minutes, yeah. something like that. But yeah, I mean, any, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, so, um, Harry, what, what do you think? I'll I, let you go. I have I've not really got much to add. I mean, Fergal mm. pretty much hit it on the head. Um, um, can't argue with the stoppage. Like, he would, um, the only way he evaded the punches was because, as Fergal said, uh, uh, put his arm in front of Figgy and if he didn't I think Volkov just would have been on him yeah uh, I do have one more thing to add I think that vo- what Volkov did really well is when when Rosen Street did apply pressure and like you said perfectly I, I couldn't agree more with what you say in the fact that Rosen Street is very good at striking when he knows the opportunities there he won't take a load of risks if he, if he doesn't know that so uh, we saw straight away as he sort of hit hit um vocal with the looping overhand and kind of almost sat him down a little bit and came in and just with a flourage of the hooks afterwards and I think he got caught with a little uppercut and it made him back up and then you could see the look on Volkov it changed straight away he knew then he was going in for the kill and he backed him up to the cage and got the fight done mm-hmm. very interesting anyway that's all we're going to talk about that fight night I mean we maybe could have chosen some different fights we maybe could have gone over a few more but we thought you know realistically it's only the fight night we want to talk about. We want to talk about a few other key pieces of news, Paolo Costa, etc. and whatnot. And uh, last week we were a bit short on time throughout the week as well, both working. So uh, it was hard to get a load of research in like we try to usually do. Always a pain, always a pain. Anyway, for this week we have a lot to talk about. UC 275, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to go with the main card. Uh, we're going to start off with, let's go with the Rogerio Bantarini, uh, Bantarin, sorry. This is Man Out Cape, but it should be a really, really interesting flyweight fight. Yeah, so um, we've got we've got Bontarin, who's uh, he's I mean he's done decent in the UFC so far. He's fought a lot of high level competition. Uh, he's um, he has struggled against some uh, like uh, he got knocked out by Karkar France and uh, lost his fight to Brendan Ravel as well. But uh, this fight, um, it shows some some different sort of challenges that he's faced before in the UFC because Cape is so confident and so explosive. He's great everywhere the fight goes. Um, I don't think Bontarin's going to really have a massive wrestling advantage. I mean, the jiu-jitsu advantage will always be there for Bontarin against most opponents. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. He's got some excellent BJJ. Um, but yeah, I think... Uh, it, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot more different challenges for Bonter, and I'm interested to see how he deals with them. I don't know what your thoughts are. Um, 
I don't I don't I don't really know what to call for this fight. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting fight to watch, yeah. I can tell you that much. Um yeah. <laughs> um, cause like Bonterin's Bonterin's good everywhere. He's he's got he's got some good striking as well, his mm. boxing primarily and his leg kicks. He uses his feints really well to set yeah. up to set up his striking and to bait bait him in for for takedowns and grapple exchanges Should and stuff like that as well. Yeah, I so, agree. Um, yeah, that's 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 what I think on Bonterin. Yeah, so I think um, the one big advantage, he, I mean, I don't know the big advantage because I'll be honest, I've watched a few of Cape's fights in Ryzen and he just looks solid everywhere. He, I mean, he looks very hittable. That's one thing I noticed from his yeah. style. But like, his wrestling's great. His timing is amazing. His head kicks, his leg kicks, his flying knees, he's got it all. And I believe he'll go far in this division. I don't know what your thoughts are on this one, Fergus. I mean, it should be a really, really interesting one. I think that um, it's going to be a really interesting bout. I'm not too sure which way it's going to go, if I'm honest with you. Mm. Obviously, you said about, you know, having watched him in a few bouts in Ryzen. Yeah. And I think that, you know, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, looking at the Ryzen and the UFC arenas, I feel like there's, you know, there's definitely a difference in how fighters will, you know, will fight. Definitely. In contrast, you know, um, in contrast, they're not the going to fight in a ring. You look at KP, he's very much, he's very aggressive, he's very on it, he's very athletic, he's very, very, he's very, very present, and he's he's very aggressive, and I mean, he's just, just a bit of a mad dog, you know what I mean? Like, mm. he's constantly, constantly going forward, he's got good wrestling, he's very good at striking, very technical, very fast, you know, um, personality as well. Yeah, you know, bags I mean, of it. But yeah, yeah, a bit cocky, you know, but um, yeah, it should be an interesting one. Obviously, you know, Bonterin, you know, he's very good at uh, taking my back. Mm. You know, very good at that. So that, that, that would be interesting to see how Cape would respond to that if yeah. it does come down to that. You know, although mm. saying that Cape, you know, although obviously Jiu Jitsu is, is never going to be as strong as Bonterin's. Yeah. You know, it, he has got a good standard of Jiu Jitsu. I think it should be interesting, really. I mean, Cape, obviously, you know, the UFC is very, very different. He's a few bouts in the UFC now, but it's, you know, very, very different to Ryzen's and standing and probably the style of fire as well. Yeah. But um, it should be interesting one. I I think that with Cape, you know, obviously I think if he focuses primarily on his striking and whatnot, he should be very, very good. As, as Assuming he tries to keep it on the feet as much as he can, I think that would be the, the ideal situation for him. Obviously, Bob Bonsman does hit with power. Mm. He's a very, very powerful guy. So, you know, how he'll do on the feet, I'm not too sure. But as long as he tries to keep it to the feet, doesn't try and take it to the ground, you know, try to be too cocky, I think he should be generally good. I think that could be one of his biggest downfalls. All right, uh, it. time for the pressure moment, boys. I'm going to press you both for a prediction on this fight. I'm, I'm, I've got mine. Yeah, what are you going for? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go Manal Kate, late, late second round knockout. Fergs? I'm going to go... It's, it's, it's a hard one, really. It's a hard one. I am under a lot of pressure. We'll go, mm -hmm. we'll go Bontrin, third round submission. Right. Yeah. I was, I mean, people might call me a liar, but I generally am agreeing with Harry. I can see a second round finish from Manuel Cape. I think it'll be a very competitive fight, but Cape, like the Ode, Os, Ode Osborne, was it? Yeah, 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 like the Ode Osborne fight. Uh, it will be very, they'll both be landing, but Cape will just find the shot to put him away. It's, so, just, it's, that, it's that stepping quickness he's got, man. Yeah, like definitely. that, that he's so much quicker than, than most fighters mm. in that weight category. One of the quickest. It's unbelievable. That fly in the eye, like, I, I still can, can get <laughs> over get that. that unbelievable, man, isn't it? He just it seemed to like glide through him. Like, it was just insane how quick he could get that, get that knee up to the target. So, uh, so yeah, mine is where well. I'm going manual cape. Do you want to get us uh, moved on to the next fight first? Of course. So the next fight is going to be the women's short way about. It's going to be between Weili Zhang and Joanna Jez, uh, J. Jez. I, I, I do know her name. Jo I, Joanna what, jo Joanna won J. Shek. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. My, my memory is shocking <laughs> when it comes down to names. You know, I, I, I know them all. I it's mean, just, we, uh, we've been very clear on her. Names are not, not our strong suit. Really. <laughs> With three bombs from Somerset. Like, we can't be pronouncing these names. Sorry, guys. I do try. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so who's going to get us kicked off with this one? Because I'm sure we're all excited to talk about it. I reckon we start for Harry, I reckon. Oh. <laughs> pressure. Oh, pressure. <laughs> pressure. Pressure. <laughs> nah. Um, I can see it being very, very similar to the last fight, but I'm I'm actually going to... I'm actually going to edge towards Joanna this time. Mm. I think after after fighting her once and, and dealing like having dealt with the pressure and and the, the punch power and everything else that Whaley has got behind her belt, um, 
I, I just I, I think that she's going to be well trained going into this and she's not going to have left any stones unturned. Yeah, I mean, the the thing that I'm thinking more into is I I actually think Joanna will win a decision because uh, it's three rounds and a lot of damage happened to Joanna in that second round. But if you look at if you look at the early rounds, every exchange Joanna was coming out on top, in my opinion, like in the first round and a half. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you actually as well. And um, I can see Wavy has had two losses since then, and we saw some of the excuses coming out from Whaley and her camp when she lost to Rose from that head kick. Uh, it was it was Deontay Wilder vibes, if I'm honest. It was quite weird because I mean we saw what happened earlier on the card, and it was horrible when Chris Weidman snapped his leg. But, I mean, you've been a professional fighter for, for years and you blame your loss on someone else breaking their leg because they fought before you. It doesn't add up to me. I'm not hating. I love Whaley. But, but um, yeah, I think I just think maybe she might not be mentally as strong as she was when she was undefeated in the UFC and champion and thinking she could walk through absolutely everybody, no problem, because that's that's the str- confidence that she struck me, me with anyway. Um so I, I am leaning Joanna. I think they've, they're both, I mean, Joanna's going to be similar every time she fights. She hasn't changed much throughout her time in the UFC. We've seen her dominate a lot of most of the women in this division. So uh, I think she'll come back. Um, and I, I can actually see her being champion after this. I think she'll win a decision. And then I think she'll beat uh, Carla Sparza too. But a bit of an early prediction for you guys there. What's your thoughts on it, Fergus? I think it should be an interesting one, really. I think that Whaley, you know, obviously is very, very good on the feet, very technical. I think Joanna is as well. So strong as well. Mm. Uh, definitely say very, very powerful, you know, uh, for, for a division that light as well. Sure, yeah. you know what I mean? But um, should be a really interesting one. I'm going to go the same way you are with Joanna. I think that Joanna is going to take it. You know, I think Joanna is um, good just with the technique and the calm composure, as you said. You know, yeah. obviously, you know, Whaley, you know, she's not going to walk for her. Mm. You know, I don't think she's going to be thinking that anyway. I, I, I could be wrong, but yeah, I think that there is definitely yeah. going to be, you know, definitely going to be a change in mentality. I think regardless, it's going to be about. I think it's um, it's it, it's a it's a hard one really because um, I I, I can't see you know Joanna getting knocked out, mm. and I can't see um, I can't I can't see you know I can't see the same opposite Whaley. Yeah, I don't think Whaley will be finished by Joanna in three rounds. I'd be shocked if yeah, Joanna I'd, could I'd, finish her in three rounds. But... Yeah, very shocked. That that'd be a mad a little tank. <laughs> mm. It'd be a bit surprised, wouldn't it? But, um, you yeah, know, I think that's going to go in a Joanna a decision and whatnot. I think that it's going to be a really, really good fight. I think it's going to be you know, very, very back and forth. I think Wadey's going to take it, you know, um, it's going to be, you know, taken the bout very, um, very technically. Mm. You know, I think that it's, it's, it's not going to be the same beforehand. You know, it's not going to be much of a brawl, I don't think. Really? I, I, I really don't. I really don't. I, I think it's going to be a different game plan because I, I, I just don't think that this is... The, I don't think it's going to be the appropriate plan for this bout, and I don't think that's what they're going to be, you know, going through. But it should be an interesting one regardless, mm. and I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah, I think the fight. I mean, how I I agree with you in the sense that I don't think it will be as wild as last time, but I agree with Harry because um he said that the fight will be similar as the last one, as in I think that it will be a very back and forth fight, and if if Whaley does win it, which I I'm not saying I think Joanna is going to gonna win like decisively i think it's gonna be a very close close decision uh i think whaley could could win it and if she does win it it'll be the same again just because the damage she can put on during the fight and um oh yeah i'm really excited to see this rematch i think it was the perfect fight to make i think um it's a bit it's a bit sly on marina rodriguez's uh path that dana white said the winner of this is getting a title shot when Marina's literally been, been at that point to get a title shot for ages. She just beat Zhang Yonan in a very good fight. So yeah, I think um I think she should be getting the next shot. But yeah, it's not how the game works. So yeah, if you want to get us into the next one, of course. So the next part is going to be between Valentina Shevchenko versus Talia Santos, a uh, woman flyweight. This is a co-main event, and what a co-main! Mm. We've got Shevchenko, arguably the best female fighter in the world. It's Talia Santos, very, very good at jiu-jitsu. Almost, you know, uh, got powerful hands and whatnot, but very, very jiu-jitsu prominent base. Mm. Almost, you know, almost almost solely, you know, obviously, you know, she could shark as well, but yeah. you, you look at, you, you watch her in the highlights, you watch her in the fights. She is primarily a jiu-jitsu fighter, so it should be a really interesting one. You got any thoughts on this one, Har? Um, Sorry, which one? Sorry. Talia Santos, Shevchenko. Shevchenko and Talia, oh. 
We don't. We all know what's going to happen here. I mean, I, I love Talia Santos, and I think she's an, a, an amazing fighter, but I, I don't think she's the, the standard of quality that Shevchenko quite is. Mm, I agree. I mean, there's uh, there's not much to go on to say that she has. I mean, I remember saying this before the Nunes fight, and I, I mean, I see people on Twitter now. I spend a lot of my time on Twitter, as you guys know. Uh, saying, oh yeah, I predicted that Nunez, that Nunez was going to lose to Pina and the things like that, and it's just not true. No one is saying Nunez would lose to Pina, and no one is going to be saying that Shevchenko will lose to Santos because it's just the likelihood in those scenarios is is uh, Matt Sarah beating a GSP where it just happens every decade in the sport. It's not something that. I'd be. I mean, how how weird would it be to see Nunes and Shevchenko lose their belt in the same year? I mean, it would be it'd be crazy, crazy weird. But mm. I, however, I'm not saying I wouldn't like it to happen. Yeah, yeah. I'd, um, I'd love to see a new champion yeah, in that definitely. division. Yeah. Shevchenko's reigned it for, for mm. <laughs> just a little bit too long now, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. So um, Talia Santos, she's, she, Sorry, guys. she's known for her grappling, but she, she's got more knockouts than she does submissions. So. She's got very heavy hands. Um, oh, I just can't see her troubling Shevchenko anyway. I think I'm going to pass this one to you first because if I'm honest, I think Shevchenko does what she wants with this fight. Mm. I'm going to have to agree with you. I think that with, when it comes to Shevchenko, you know, um, you, you can't really think of like anyone who's really going to beat her. Mm. You, you just can't. It's, 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 it's probably not the... It's probably not the correct thought, but it's just, you know, it's just, she's just so dominant. Mm. Uh, she's just so good. You know, uh, it's, it's hard to see what Talia Santos is going to do to her. Obviously, you know, very good jiu-jitsu, you know, um, obviously, so, you know, got some good heavy hands, a lot of knockouts and whatnot. Yeah. But um, I, I honestly think that, you know, Shevchenko is going to have primarily, you know, the majority of control. I mean, who's to say, you know, what will happen? You can never predict this, you know, outright. And as you said about, you know, Matt Sarah and GSP, you know, it does happen once in a decade, but who's to say about this? Mm. Isn't isn't a decade it's gonna happen in, but um it should be a really interesting one. I am looking forward to it. I'm gonna to have to go Valentino Shevchenko. I would um I'd love to know. Uh, I don't know if you can get this up, but I'd love to know uh Talia Santos's finishing rate because I know she's got I know she's got a decent few submissions and I read somewhere which I read a lot of uh a lot of rubbish in them <laughs> articles, but I read somewhere that she has ten wins by TK. I'm not sure if that's a hundred percent, but she's got ten wins. And three, four submissions. That's that's like a eighty percent finish rate or some something like that. Mm. What what is it? What is that? No, so uh, I'm not sure we can pull that up, but um, yeah. So her, she she she's a finisher, but I can't see her being able to get close to finishing. So it's ten wins by knockout, three wins by submission, and she's only had nineteen fights. So. She's a she, she's a killer. Like, if this wasn't Shevchenko, she could be a champion. But at the end of the day, it is Shevchenko, so she won't be. That's my opinion. I mean, to think, you know, thirteen finishes out of nineteen wins. That uh, it's pretty impressive. Mm. And then just a record of nineteen one in general. Mm. Very very impressive. Uh, three fight win streak, four fight win streak. Even sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, very impressive. So it should be interesting to see um how this battle play out. Like I said, I think Shevchenko, you know, is, is going to win it. I don't think many people are going to be predicting otherwise, you know, but, um, yeah, so I'm um, that, that, that one, but, um, yeah, it should be, should be interesting in general. Anyway, moving on to, I believe it's the main so can event. I just say, yeah, of course. I hope this fight can finally lead, I mean, Nunes has got to go beat Pina in the rematch first, but I hope this fight can finally lead to uh, uh, Shevchenko versus Nunes 3, because that fight is, it's the only r- fight to make. I mean, the, there's a few fights outside the UFC I'd like to see, um, See, is it Kyla Harrison, the judo girl, who's who's uh she's so good right now. Like she's not fighting the competition, but um, she, like the the that fight was rumored for a while, but now that's not happening. I think we need to see Shevchenko Nunes free. Yeah, it's probably got to happen. I mean, I I don't know. If, I I still don't know if I think that. I still don't think Shevchenko. I think she's too small for Nunes. Yeah, I, but, I, I mean, you yeah. can't ever count it out because of the skill set that, mm. that Shevchenko has got there. She's so good, man. She is like one of the best fighters I've ever seen. Oh, she's the best female fighter yeah. we've ever seen, yeah, like, in I my agree. opinion. I agree. I, I'd uh, imagine her like just being able to, if she was a bit bigger, she could have had so many more interesting fights. Like her versus Jermaine Duranime would be insane. Her versus Cyborg would have been insane. There's so many fights that. 
if she was just a little bit bigger that we could have seen, but you know, it's a shame. Anyway, um, yeah, moving next. on to the next bout, we're going to give a light heavyweight main event: Glover Teixeira versus Yuri Prohashka. 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 Excellent pronunciation once again. <laughs> uh, this should be a really, really interesting one. Both interesting fighters. You know, um, we Yuri fights. Yeah. Yeah. Yuri's a nutter. Honestly, I, I've I've never seen anybody use their chin as a guard. Yeah. Not not in the way he does anyway. I mean, him and Tony could be brothers with the yeah, way they defend. <laughs> definitely so. Definitely so. Anyway, are many thoughts on this one have? Um, yeah, um, oh, well, it's a, it's, it's, it could go what either way for my, in my opinion. Um, you got Tishiro, who's obviously great on the ground, and Prohashko, who is obviously incredibly, incredibly explosive on the, on the feet and does some crazy striking. Um, yeah, so uh, you're you. For me, it's like whoever can implement their game plan first, because yeah, if you if Yuri can keep the fight standing, then I mean, I think it will be over within the first round. If Yuri if Yuri's back touches the mat, I think yeah. it could be the, the exact same, the opposite, so the opposite way. Though for me, this fight's got a first round finish written all over it. It's uh, it's one art against another. I mean, we know that um. Glover used to be very reliant on how powerful his hands were. He's got a lot of good knockout wins. We even recently we saw the way he rocked um, Jan Blachowicz and he ragged old Anthony Smith around and beat him, so knocked all his teeth out. And uh, I, th- I think it was it was over. I think it was um, I think it was Glover who who was on top of him hitting him and uh, he just goes, "Oh, sorry, brother," like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah I think it was. Actually, Anthony yeah. Smith was like, "Oh, it's all good, mate. It's all good. It's part of the game." So like, yeah, Glover's such a nice guy, and he, but he's such a killer. Like straight away after winning the title, he said, "Like Yuri's next." They saw each other backstage. He's got one of the best, one of the one of the nicest personalities in the whole of the UFC, in yeah, my opinion. Definitely. Just not a bad thing to not really a bad thing to say yeah. about anyone. Yeah, what's your what's your thoughts on this fight, Pergs? So it should be a really interesting one. I mean, it's quite hard to predict. Obviously, you know, um, Glover has just been you know dominating um, finishes like as well. Rate. The finish rate's crazy on, on, on both. Glover. Well, yeah, on both. Can we pull both always... their finish rates up? Because honestly, there's like Glover. I think four decisions in his whole career, and Yuri has one decision in his whole career. So. I don't know if you need to pull them up because I know them, but <laughs> so yeah, I don't know how many it is. Uh, so Teixeira has had forty pro belts, won eighteen by knockout and ten by submission, which is crazy. So uh, seventy percent of his fights have ended in a finish. Um, so we'll go. We'll go. Yuri again. His like his finish rate might even be even crazier because. Uh, his only decision win was in an open open weight fight against a heavyweight, and he still managed to win, but not by knockout. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he's got what is it? Uh, so he's got twenty eight wins and is it twenty five by KO? Is that yeah, yeah, twenty five by KO, Jesus, two man, submissions, that's... one decision. That's crazy. He's got three losses with two TKOs, one submission. Never been to the scorecards and lost either. Um, but yeah, this fight is so hard to call. Like, so if we if we are gonna give predictions for what's your what's your prediction? So I think when it comes down to this fight, I think that with the two fighters, I think with Yuri, I feel like with Glover, you know, uh, being a little bit older and whatnot, you know, I mean, primarily you, you look at it, a lot of the successes they they come from when he takes them to the ground, whether it's pounding them, whether it's using his jujitsu, you know, it's it's usually on the ground mm. he wins. Um, Yuri hits hands very low. Yeah, I I I I don't think he even guards his body at the time. You know, his hands are down by his hips. I think that um the amount of you know power and whatnot he produces from having his hands so low, and uh, from being in that position, um I feel like you know it's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's yeah. gonna be you know it's, it's it's gonna be um this is gonna be a lot of opportunity for him to you know hit him mm. with some high shots. Saying that you know I I I don't know what his takedown defense is gonna be like against Glover. Yeah, it's of, gonna be interesting because obviously you know yes he can defend a takedown and whatnot. And obviously, you know, he's got to be able to, you know, when you when you fight the way mm. he does. But I feel like I feel like if, if if he's able to keep up my feet, I feel like it could definitely go year his way. Yeah. I think that with Glover Teixeira, you know, obviously he's um he's he's been doing very well. Obviously, you know, he's a lively champion. Mm. But um I, I feel like I feel like Yuri could potentially take it from him just by, you know, by by being able to produce the strikes he does. Mm. You, you watch him fight, 
he's very aggressive, very pressuring. He, he, <laughs> he's always putting the pressure on, you know, he, yeah. he, it's, it's almost like he doesn't understand the concept of, you know, mm. throwing the jab and keeping it distance because <laughs> yeah. he, he, he just wants to go in for it, mm. you know, so it should, it should be an interesting one. I'm going to go Yuri knockout. You know, is it going to be first round? We're sure, like it's well, it's still like written all over. I, I, it's not going to be first round or early second. Yeah, um, it's, it's with me. If um, if uh, he fought, I think he fought for Dean Nemkov, uh, back a while ago, and um, that he was able to take him down and control him for a lot of the fight. Uh, I watched. I've gone back and watched a few of his rising fights when he came into the UFC. Um, and uh, he, I think he fought King Mo the Wall when. I think he fought him twice, and one of the fights he was able to... Yeah, he fought Vadim Nemkov in Ryzen, uh, and King Mo was able to take him down in the first fight and hold him there. I think that's the only two who really been able to do it. There was... um, I know he fought some really, really good college wrestler. Uh, I can't remember who, the guy's name. And, um, yeah, so I think that if, if Yuri can anyway keep his standing for longer than three minutes, I think I agree with you, but... I also, he got taken down and gave his back up to Dominic Reyes for a split second. And if you do that to someone like Glover, then it's it's a wrap. And I I actually think that's the way it would go. I think he'll Glover will get the takedown early um, after getting a hurt on a big exchange. Dump him down and mount him. Roll, it'll roll to his back and then he'll take take him out with a rear naked choke in the first round. Yeah, I probably, I, I, I again, <laughs> Well, again, it is a difficult one because, it, like I said, it could go either way. Mm. Um, they're, they're they're both masters of their own of their own um, martial art. Yeah, definitely. And uh, but I, if I'm gonna call anything, I'm I, I'm gonna say Glover just because I really really want him to. I really want to see the rematch with Jan. Do you think Glover's gonna win though? Um, I I. I it's all down to who gets there first, really, mm. in my opinion. Like, I I can't actually say. I don't know who's gonna win. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm calling. I'm gonna call Glover because mm. I want the fuck. I, I want the fucking rematch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think both have that respect for each other, where they both want that fight as well. And mm. I think hopefully we'll get to see it. I mean, if if Yuri wins, I don't know if I want to see Yuri Yan straight away. No, because I think the. I don't know. But I think it's a bad matchup for Yam. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily think it is because he's think... quick. He's a, I don't know. They, I don't yeah. know. Yan's quick as well for a big bloke too. Though. And yeah, it's, Jan's hard, just... it's a hard one again. Yan's such a good counter puncher with those hooks, and I think mm. if, if he, Yuri's easy to hit, and Yan could easily knock any man out. So. That fight, to be fair, yeah, I would like to see that fight straight away. <laughs> I've, changed, I've changed my own mind already. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so um, there is a few news. So, yeah, my prediction is Glover. Turbos is Yuri. And Harry, I think, is going with Glover too. I think all by first round, maybe. Phil might disagree, but some some crazy news has broke out in the last few hours of a, of a fight that's happening in London. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this too. So, folks, you want to bring up a news article about this? <laughs> so, he's doing... so, coming up very soon in London, I think something like 70 days away, something like that. Um, Did not quite expect this one. Michael Renan Page versus Mike Perry in Bare Knuckle, BKFC. How crazy is that? I, 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 I was not anticipating this to be the case. I mean, it's going to be a hell of a bout, mm. honestly, you know, and I am really looking forward to it. Um, It'd be interesting to see how it goes. I I did not expect to see this matchup ever really, let alone in bare knuckle. Can I can I can I just say I love how because he's a Bellator fighter mm. and Mike Perry's a bare knuckle fighter. Mm. I love how the organisations outside of the UFC are allowing their fighters to go and do other bits to make their money as well. Like it's they're not they're not drafted to one singular league. They can yeah, go out and they can they it's can like fight. They, yeah, it's like PFL. Yeah, only PFL's. Bit of uh, judge not like like a football league, yeah. which is a bit weird. It's cool, yeah. but it's a bit weird. But I mean, but... You're allowed when the season ends. You're allowed to go to a different. Yeah, you can do what, what you want. want yeah, it starts again. That's what I mean, like there's it's, there's such better ways. I I, I hate to diss the UFC here because I love it so much, but it there's such it, it does deserve this. In there are such better ways to to make your fighters want to stay at least. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean. What other organisation do you hear where a, a heavyweight champion of the world is crying about, not crying, that sounded really bad, <laughs> but crying out about being severely underpaid and wanting to leave and 
go get his ass kicked by Tyson Fury. So, I mean, that that proves how much he is underpaid. Um, that sounded like I hated Ngannou, actually. Right? <laughs> Ngannou, but... We were loving yeah, Ngannou, yeah. by the way, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, this fight to me is just crazy how it's happened. I, would, I just wish Bellator signed him and they... Actually, I don't know, because it probably wouldn't be as competitive in MMA, because Mike Perry, just, I don't think, would be able to find him anywhere in the cage. But in bare knuckle, it's such a weird matchup, and I have no idea how it's going to go. I, I don't have many thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts on the fight. Um, asking for an early prediction, I think MVP would be too quick. But then again, we've seen with Mike Perry's fought Vicente Luque and very cowboy Cerrone and all these high level fighters in the UFC when Michael Venom Page has been fighting. I mean, can you name four fighters Michael Venom Page has fought? Diego Lima, Jake Lima, Storley. Lima, Storley. We, we only know Stormley because we watch them. Um, Diego Lima, Storley, Cyborg, Paul Daly. I can name four. I don't think I should name any more than that. Like, I mean, he's been fighting some questionable some, fighters yeah, for a long time. Because, I mean, he's their golden boy at the end of the day. And, that's why they're letting him do this because, I mean, this is speculation from me, but in my eyes, he he would have said to Bellator, I'm going and making Z amount of money. I'll give you a percentage if you go and let yeah. me fight outside of my contract where the UFC would never even need the money to even yeah, think about right. entertaining well, them. Neither, neither, neither to Bellator. Bellator are rich yeah. as hell. And they just, for the amount, UK isn't going to make a difference. No, I mean, the, amount, the amount of million pound tournaments they do, they do want, they do what, two, two three a year? But do you it's think, ridiculous. Uh, do you think, it's, it's not like they need the money. I wonder if they even. It's, the, it, it's, it's what it is for them, I think, and it, I genuinely think it comes down to this. I think it is just the fact that it makes them look better. Mm. Maybe, yeah, true. They need that. And it gains m more star power on MVP as well. Exactly. And, like, it's just... It, it does. It, it, everything they do makes them look slightly better. Like, a lot of the stuff they did, with, especially with all the... With all the um, uh, sponsors and shit. Oh, yeah, sponsorships yeah. and stuff like that. It's they allow their fighters. Fight. It's, it's yeah. so much better for, for, for the fighters' paycheck. Well, so <laughs> what's your thoughts on all of this, though? So, I mean, I'm just, you know, before I go on to my thoughts specifically, I do agree with you, Harry. I, I think that this is a really, really good opportunity for Bellator. Dis displaying the, uh, the, displaying the, God, i losing my words. <laughs> it's so hot, yeah. yeah. It's so hot. Dis displaying their, their bloody star boy as well. Yeah. 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 But, you know, but. We're going to bring them a lot of fans alone. Of course, of course. But, you know, by really showing, you know, how much they do care about the fighters, you know, and, and how much they do want the fighters to, you know, be able to, succeed outside of you yeah, know outside yeah, of just yeah. the, the Bellator organization but I think that another thing as well you know it helps out Bellator as well and it helps out the fighter because you know Michael Ben and Page can then go and say you know he, he he's a bare knuckle fighter and an MMA fighter he's a, he's, a, he's, he's, he's a now a multi-sport athlete not mm. as if MMA doesn't make you a multi-sport yeah. athlete as it is yeah and I think that you know it is really really interesting you know because I think that when it comes down to um when it comes down to it you know, um, it, it it does really show you know quite a bit of versatility as far as um as far as you know these these fighters do go. You look at Anderson Silva for example, you know fighting boxing and whatnot. So, you know he's gone from MMA to boxing. He he he, he truly is a almost a complete martial artist competing in two different you know mm. two different um two different sports at a very high level. It's not that many don't, but yeah. So um, Michael Van Page has boxed two professional belts before, winning two by knockout. I don't know if. That's a lot to take. Do you think the boxing experience will help him, or do you think bare knuckle is just that different? So it's an interesting one, really, because I think you know when it comes down to it, I think that obviously you know with bare knuckle boxing and whatnot, uh, uh, boxing comes from bare knuckle. Mm. That, that, you know, it originates from bare knuckle boxing. Well, yeah, that's, that's where that's where punching someone comes from, isn't it? You know, from boxing. <laughs> exactly, but I think it's, it's, it's interesting because I think with you know bare knuckle boxing, you know, it is all primarily, um, primarily, it's, it's it's all orientated around you know, um, your your hand work. Yeah. How good a striker you are on the hand. Yeah. You know, so, you know a lot of it does come to you know, for example, Art and Noble. Um, what was it? Paul. Paulie. Ma Paul Marginali. Paul well, Marginali. You know. Paulie Marginali. And, and you can see, you can see, you know, um, how much of, you know, how how much being a world class boxer impacted his performance. And he did, yeah, yeah, it didn't. Do and and he, I, he, he was, he's a professional boxer that ran away for the whole fight. Literally, did like there was not one time where he was on the front foot. He was running the whole fight. Yeah, it was embarrassing. That was such an embarrassing fight. 
I mean, but to be fair, it did benefit him, you know. I feel like, yeah. you know, that did really, you know, demonstrate what um, being a boxer in bare knuckle does do. Yeah. And I think, as he said, you know, about Michael Page, you know, having fought in boxing beforehand, you know, winning two by knockout, I think that will definitely provide him with an advantage. I think that, you know, we look at some MMO fighters who do go into boxing and whatnot. Obviously, Anderson Silva's doing quite well at the moment. We had, what was it, Tyron Woodley? Mm. You know, um, in that like YouTube match or whatever it was on Elton. Don't pretend match. you don't know Jake Paul. <laughs> nah, everyone is Jake Paul. You know, we, we, we wish I didn't. Yeah. But um, you know, I I I feel like it's it's important that we do have some MMA fighters do go into boxing to to show that because I mean it's it's it's, it's appalling really to think that happened to a UFC world champion. Yeah, it's disgusting. So, but That's yeah, why I'm yeah. glad Bisping is going nowhere near any of that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. So I think that it really is important that we do get more, you know, more MMA fighters and whatnot fighting in you know other competitions if, if they choose to wish to do so, and it shouldn't mm. be something discouraged at all. Yeah. And I'm I am really looking forward to it. But I think it will definitely provide Michael Page with an advantage. Obviously, Mike Perry is just an animal with it is. And obviously, Mike Perry has had one fight in bare knuckle before, so it kind of equals out, but Michael Page having that early boxing advantage before before Perry was really... I mean, I'm sure the first thing Perry did was box, but I'm sure the first thing Perry did was when he could walk because he probably had street fights I constantly. Think, I think it all comes down to whether... whether whether Mike can Michael Pe- Mike Perry can actually get in close. Yeah, if be. he can get if he can get in on him and actually land, then then Venom uh, Page is in for a and horrible the night. Ring is so small in Yeah, you can't run for too long in, in Ben Up. There's think, nowhere to run. To be honest, I when I first saw I I thought Page might Page might have the advantage because speed, but now really deep deeply thinking the the ring is gonna be a big big problem for him. I think uh, yeah. Perry, if Perry can cut him off I think we can see him get the knockout. Oh, Perry's a dangerous, dangerous man to have stood in front of you if there's not a lot of space there as well. And I'm definitely trying to get tickets for this as well. One hundred percent. We're going. I mean, the minute, the minute, the minute that email comes through, I'm buying them tickets. I'm telling you. I mean, if I mean, we went to MVP's last fight and uh, we wanted to see a striking matchup. So snooze for we're, storm. We're definitely not getting no wrestling match here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's this one. <laughs> you know, I think something to remember with bare knuckle as well is that you know, um, obviously when you're fighting in you know, um, Bellator or the UFC or any any kind of MMA organization, you're mm. wearing gloves. Yeah. And I think you know one of the things which will benefit uh, Michael Venom Page, obviously you know because of his fighting style. Yes, you know he he is quite aggressive and whatnot. Mm. But um, I think that you know him being able to you know maintain that distance and him being able to. Uh, you really not have to, you know, stand the bank too much is going to benefit him. I think that, you know, it's, 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 it's a very, very big difference punching somebody without gloves in contrast to gloves on. Yeah. And, you know, if, if you want to stand the bank, a lot of the time you're going to cause more damage to yourself and you're your opponent. I'm, I'm not going to ask for, for predictions for both of you because, uh, I, I, I really want to give this fight a good old breakdown to see who is going to win in a few podcast time closer towards it. So, um, one thing I did want to bring up is I saw a article that Dana White is interested in um, entertaining the fact that Khabib and Tony Ferguson could be coaches on tough, even though Ooh. even though that um, I don't know what the quote was. Uh, I don't I can't remember what the quote was, but um, I, I know I definitely heard somewhere that Dana uh, Dana is down to do it. Um, he said that'd be an interesting. He one. said maybe it's a way for him to finally drag Khabib out of retirement and make him fight. Which I don't. I mean, if that's the aim, then that's not happening. But uh, well, yeah, but you want, if if you're a tough, mm. if you're going to be a coach on tough, you've got to fight at the end of it. That's the whole point of the mm. tough coaches. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so that may, so then we they, they seen... might be, they might be talking about it, but that's that's something that Khabib's got. A, Khabib's got no. But we, we've really seen before. Be. We've seen coaches against each other and not fight at the end of it they could do that i mean yeah it doesn't happen very often no though. but i mean for stars like we saw connor and you're our favorite it'd be on that sort of level if khabib came back and and stepped and not even he's not supposed to fight no though. they no they were never booked to fight i think uh connor kind of just built it up in his head that you i was there to fight him because i mean he, 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 he was just like yeah like, was such a chill guy the whole way through that season as well connor was like mm. trying to Really trying to get under his skin yeah. and shoot for it. So, so Dana White, Dana White's quote about this is: "Hopefully they get pissed off at each other, and I can make them fight." Dana White is sold on the idea of Khabib Nurmagomedov coaching against Tony Ferguson on the Ultimate Fighter TV show, which, in my opinion, is 
gold entertainment. We need that for tough right now. Mm. That would be so good if they could put that together. Yeah. I think it would be really good. I think Tuff's an interesting one because obviously, you know, over the years it has become slightly less reality TV and, and more, you know, f- focused on mm, fire definitely. element, you know, which is fine, you know, obviously. But I think that, you know, I think one of the bigger pills of Tuff is that um, there was, you know, that, that enjoyable, you know, goofy side. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tony would bring that too. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, for example, who was it? Um, Conor McGregor, uh, Gerard Faber? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was... And then, I thought that was a hilarious season. And that, that led on to the whole TJ Dillashaw and Cody Garbrandt beef as well, which was one of the best in the UFC. It was when them two were against Chelbo and Tough and Cody just couldn't keep his hands off him. He was attacking him at every moment. I mean, imagine just seeing Tony ankle roll, ankle pick could be from a halfway across the building. It would be class. Sorry. It would be absolutely quality. I mean, the, the, the only thing which I wouldn't like the idea of it is... The be fighting Tony Ferguson. Yeah, that's, let's mm. not do that with it. Uh, that, 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 just, yeah, it would be nice you know, not to see that yeah. happen. To be let's fair. just make it fun. Tony's to, Tony's um and as much we, as we love him, he's he's um on, the on his way out. Yeah, and are we gonna see them fight middleweight? Because Khabib ain't getting yeah, that. Massive yeah, now. It's it's huge. Huge. I mean, I'd rather see Khabib Paddy Pimlet. Oh yeah, mind you, but we're both walking round weight and about the same size. <laughs> Super heavyweight. Two sumo wrestlers <laughs> fighting. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. There's that. Uh, round us. So, so yeah, that's something I'm really interested in. I don't know what else has really been going on. You know, I mean, I've seen Conor McGregor and Ali Abdulaziz beefing on Twitter just for a change. What a surprise! <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, that's I don't know. We spoke about Connor too much in the last week. I don't want to go on to anything about Connor. Right? Yeah. Is that? Uh, I mean, we saw TJ Dillashaw and Paddy Pimlet having a bit of a back and forth. That was interested in the week. Um, Dillashaw just basically called him fat and said he's never going to win a title because of it. <laughs> Paddy said, well, at least I don't need steroids for mine, so I don't know. But there's not much going on, to be honest. Oh, Paolo Costa? Yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me. Paolo Costa is... Can you pull up the images of the lady? Because we can finally see the horrific elbow that, that landed on a nurse. You know what I mean? Um, it was it was pathetic. <laughs> we would, that's why... I mean, in these situations, we see MMA fighters do a lot of stupid things. And we don't want to jump to conclusions, but um, I knew that didn't happen. It just, and then the lady released a photo of her lips, and there was just nothing there. I mean, Paolo, uh, I saw a tweet where it's, it was like that he retweeted, and it said, "You must have a weak elbow um, next time. Hit it with a head kick." And he liked it and retweeted it, which was quite funny. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, there it is. So there's the lady's lips. I mean, there's what would you say they're even swollen? I mean, not particularly. You'd you think a guy like Paolo Costa be causing more damage. I mean, not not to say he, he didn't do it, but... Um, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, if Paolo Costa, if, yeah. uh, Paolo Costa was trying to hurt her, his, her, her jaw would be hanging off, not not just a slightly yeah. puffy lip. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it's not even yeah. not even that puffy. She's... <laughs> It's there. Yeah. She's po- poking. She, yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's literally doing honest, the whole lip puff thing. I, I don't want it either, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't even want to talk about this. It's clearly just some... Um, some desperate lady, either just wanting attention, wanting some money. Yeah, wants to clout. Just, just, we've seen it a lot. Where, I mean, we've seen it a lot where fighters, as known as John Jones, will do stupid, stupid things and make the sport look bad. Like we're just human cockfighters, like everyone used to say back in the day. But yeah, I mean, it's not. It's a respectful sport. This stuff doesn't have power. Costa. I mean, I'm glad that it came out not to be true because it kind of puts my theory of him being a bit crazy to rest. I think he is just a big old jokester and just likes to play around on the internet. That's my view on Paolo Costa. I don't think there's no harm in what he's doing, really. I mean, you know, I'm I'm really glad that's not true because obviously, you know, you you, you hear it and you think to yourself, you know, something's clearly going wrong here. Mm. Because um, it's it's, it's, there's there's strange behaviour and then there's like behaviour which just isn't even. I was. What were you more shocked at when, when uh, MVP versus Mike Perry got released, got announced, or when Paolo Costa allegedly elbowed the woman in the head? I, as as bizarre as it might be to say, I I say the BKFC. Really, really? But, but I mean, <laughs> in, in in all fairness, you know, like it, it, it's it's just a strange one in general. Really, I mean, I'm as I said, you know, I'm glad that Paolo Costa didn't actually do this. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, it would have been absolutely mm. awful. 
you know, um, we're assuming, you know, he, he's been he's been denounced. I mean, he must, I mean? he must, he must, like, he's got to have some some like genuine confidence though, because I mean, it was straight away afterwards he was posting tweets about it yeah, and before, posting the memes and everything before, before anything he even been, got released. Yeah, like, to the public. Innocent. That's you kind know, of when I got the vibe. He was yeah, yeah, that's for, like, no, you're not like you're not gonna you're not gonna elbow a woman in the mouth and then yeah, instantly you start twitching. Yeah, that's, that's George, George Mazda asking himself man. some trouble there, literally. Like, Mazda soccer punch Covenant in the street and then made a video calling him a pussy. <laughs> 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 yeah. Just guilty, <laughs> fucking handcuff me now, please. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I thought this podcast would be a bit longer today, but. We all had quick, snappy views on the fight. Um, mm. uh, the, the card last week was it was good. We wanted to do more on it. We're, we're going to really hit it hard in the next few weeks. Um, I don't know if you've got anything else to talk about, Fergus. There's, uh, there's, uh, is there anything that announced recently? Is there any fights? I'm not even sure. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um, so yeah, um, I think we'll wrap it up there. This has been Combat Chats Podcast. Make sure to follow us on all the socials, mainly Twitter, YouTube. We'll be looking to upload private videos on there as well as the podcast now as well. So a lot more content for you guys to enjoy. Thanks, thanks for listening. Thank you for listening. Cheers.